is June 20th and we're conducting an interview with Eve Newman. Eve, thank you so much for opening up your home to us. And You're welcome. Your home is beautiful. Thank and you. Unfortunately, the, the reality is that this beautiful home is located in the middle of something that's happening to us, something that's much bigger, and we, I would like to discuss that with you. But let's just start by making an introduction. Tell us about yourself. Okay. My name is Eve Newman. I'm a solo practitioner. I practice in Richmond County, Staten Island, New York. I've been doing it for a long time. I do per diem only, which means I do overflow work from other law firms. Because I do that and all my work is in court and I maintain no clients of my own, I have uh, been off, it will now be three months and one week as of I believe tomorrow because the courts are closed, at least closed to attorneys other than court personnel and being that there are no court appearances, attorneys don't have overflow work, so I am home doing projects at home. And which courts did you practice in? Richmond County only. Supreme Court, Richmond County. Um, my background was varied and I went to all counties in the city of New York and I did go to Nassau and sometimes Suffolk. But since starting my own practice over 15 years ago, I've been only appearing in Richmond County. Okay. And what type of cases do you handle? I do civil cases of all kinds. My background is plaintiff's personal injury, but I also worked part-time for a defense firm, so I can do defense work. Over the years, I've done a lot of medical malpractice appearances. I feel comfortable doing those. I do depositions. Um, I do some commercial appearances. Basically, unless it's a criminal case and it's in Richmond County, I'm your person. <laughs> <laughs> or at least I was your person. <laughs> and you just touched up on it, but can you just tell us step by step how you were affected, how your practice was affected? Because as you can imagine, you turn on your TV and then we hear all these stages of closure, uncertainty, number of cases. So what went through your mind when you, as a solo practitioner who only practices in one court, handling overflow of cases, what, what went through your mind? I'll start with my, the last day I appeared in court. By then, we knew the pandemic was upon us. But it still didn't hit home because who would think that the whole world would close? I remember being in court, the calendar was light because judges were already starting to adjourn things. We thought for a couple of weeks. I remember that last day in court, an attorney that I knew pretty well was wearing a mask and gloves and I thought, boy, that's a bit of an overreaction. Little did I know that would be the last day I went to court. And I came home that day and the mayor was on TV, the governor was on TV calling for a shutdown. So not only was my work gone, but basically my whole life was gone. My daughter, a college student, sent home from school. Um, she was home. Everybody was home. And we didn't know how long it would last. And I do remember at the beginning, the president saying, you know, this was in mid-March, president was saying, well, hopefully by Easter we'll be open. So the fact that I had that date, I said, okay, I'll have a bit of a forced vacation. But then as Easter was approaching and things were getting worse, I realized that Easter's not a viable date. And to keep my sanity, at that point, I just did not give myself a date that I'll be going back. And still now today in mid-June, now going into late June, I still have no idea when I'm going back. And then it, and then it hit me. Did you ever even imagine that this would happen? Did you plan for this? Did you have any backup plan? No. No. I have been working since I'm 16 years old. I always worked in the summer. I always worked after school. And unless a lightning bolt came down or God forbid I got a horrible sickness, I wasn't even planning on ever retiring because I love my work. And then all of a sudden I wake up and it's a weekday and I have nowhere to go. And no idea when I'm going back. 
I mean, I'm a widow. My husband has passed away. I'm the sole support of the household and I'm self-employed and courts are closed. So all of a sudden, a very nice income goes to absolute zero. And it's fr a frightening thought. Yeah. And I guess if you had a chance to go back and do things differently, what would you change in order to prepare yourself for something unthinkable like this? Well, I don't know if anybody can ever be prepared and I could never have imagined this. It's like something out of a horror movie. But fortunately, although I like to buy lots of things, <laughs> I always save for a rainy day. So I knew that I'd be able to pay my mortgage. I don't have office expenses except for my home office. Um, my daughter is home from school. So except for the basic food and shelter, I'm not spending money on gas. I'm not spending money on tolls. I mean, it's horrible, but you must always save for a rainy day because the rainy day could be something not of your own doing. Right. And I will always be thankful that I did save for a rainy day. Not that this hasn't affected me in a horrendous way, but thank goodness I'm not losing my house, at least not yet. <laughs> And if, I just want to touch upon something. Um, the Richmond County Bar Association, you are on the board. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. And can you just tell us more what the Bar Association have, have been, has been doing for you? How, how, if in any way, did it help you during this time? Not only do you suddenly wake up with no purpose, you're also very lonely. And especially at the beginning, right. no one wanted anybody to come anywhere near their home, even with social distancing, people stayed in place, stayed in their house. So it was my daughter and me. And you know, it, 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 it could be lonely and you feel isolated, but from the very start, our Richmond County Bar Association had our regular meetings. Um, we did a Zoom, we have board meetings every month. We did our, our board meeting by Zoom. We talked about what we're going to do during this pandemic to help our members and the Richmond County Bar Association has risen to the occasion. We have uh, the new lawyers group has had game night on several occasions. Um, they have cooking every couple of every couple of weeks. They, they I'm not much of a cook, but they have wonderful Zoom cooking classes and they have yoga and they have yoga consistently. Also, uh, our past president, Mr. Jay Duskin, made sure to keep in touch with all members. And we even had our annual election and voting two weeks ago via Zoom. And it was wonderful to see everybody participating, to see judges coming in on the, on the meeting. And at the end, when the new officers were sworn in, one of our appellate division judges, Judge Mastro, swore us in and it was a wonderful thing. Um, when Judge Master swore us in. And uh, now Sheila McGinn has taken over the reins and she also has sent out emails, at least three this week, keeping us abreast of, of the court reopening, when it's gonna reopen, uh, what stage we're at, what to expect, electronic filing, because you know a, a lot of conferences are done electronically. Uh, they had a, a continuing education on electronic conferences. So the Bar Association has been really wonderful and supportive and it, may, it, it makes you feel less isolated. I still feel like I'm part of them. I know that's wonderful. And I guess one of my last questions, what are you hoping to see in the very near future? Because today is, April, uh, today is June 20th and I am able to sit next to you yes. because we both agreed not wearing masks yes. at this point, um, but <laughs> Are you hoping that things will be open? And if so, stages or certain things, what, what is your vision with regards to getting back to our normal? Normal. I think it's important not to have a new normal. I think it's important to have normal. Will it happen tomorrow? No. I envision, I, 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 I found once I stopped setting dates when I think we're going back by, I got a lot better. So now, 
I don't think about when we're going back. When we're ready, we go back. Yes, at first, I think the calendars will be lighter. I think we'll be wearing masks. I think they'll still be social distancing. But I see a time when it will be normal. Hopefully a vaccine will be developed and those that need the vaccine, those vulnerable people will get the vaccine. I think this, this COVID virus will take the course of all viruses, like the flu. Yes, it's more contagious. Yes, people that have gotten sick, some of them have gotten really sick and lots of people have died, but I think it will, and I hope it will run its course. I'm looking forward to one day looking back at this time and saying, oh my gosh, it's like something out of a horror movie, but yet we all will get through it and we will all have our lives back. Yeah, well, thank you so much. I don't believe I have any more questions left. If you want to say anything else or if you have a separate topic to discuss about the pandemic, how it affected you or maybe what you observed about the practice of law in this um, time, just go ahead. Yes, now I know that um, a lot of law firms were not even able to get into their office and people were doing things remotely from home. I mean, I don't have paperwork to do because my whole work is per diem court appearances, but some firms have paperwork to do and they've been doing it remotely. And by the way, I've heard from lots and lots of my clients checking in to make sure I'm okay, looking forward. Everybody wants normal back. Everybody, Everybody does. Um, I, took a, I took some continuing, a lot of continuing education during this time. And the New York, uh, New York State Trial Lawyers Association and the um, Trial Lawyers Institute has offered many free CLEs to everybody, not just their members. And they've been wonderful CLEs, uh, continuing educations, with top practitioners and judges. And I've taken a lot of them. And that also makes me feel better because I still feel like I'm a lawyer. I still have a hand in the game. Um, there are remote depositions. A lot of people are doing depositions. Uh, the, the court reporting companies have done it. I took a class on that and I would certainly be willing to do remote uh, depositions. One of my firms recently called me and said they're planning on doing some, would I be interested? I said, of course. But I look at that as only temporary. The conferences in court that they're doing remotely. You can't get as much accomplished on a remote conference as you can with a courtroom full of attorneys and, and court personnel working out their differences. I just don't see it happening. I don't see things going remote, not only in law, but in, in, in you know, they talk about remote education. I don't see that happening either, at least for the younger children. I'm just going to well, get through this. Working. Yeah. 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 A lot of people are realizing these days that keeping a whole office is, it, it doesn't make sense anymore because why pay for rent if you're doing so well with your employees working from home? So Yes. And a lot of things can be done from home. But then again, I think there's something to be said for the camaraderie of a law firm, of the law office. If you're working on something and you have a question, you run into the, your right. office mate next door. <laughs> it's a little isolating for people working from home. I mean, I work from home when I do my paperwork in the afternoons, but I'm also in court every morning, so it's very social. But to constantly be in your home doing your work i think it could be a little isolating and the reality is people need people we need to be social with social beings that's why they work at the, they call it the work culture because if everybody's remote what kind of culture is that that's, a remote culture yeah so that's not a concept we would want to see at this yeah. point and i want everybody to to recover and i want this virus to go away and i'm willing to stick it out until but i'm looking forward to going back to regular normal Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you.